Okay, quick diagnosis. This is a Kicker KX 1200.1, a old school amplifier. Firstly, let's try and power it up and see if it comes on. Fan spins, we have current draw from the supply, and we have a green light, which usually should mean everything's okay. Let's check power supply operation. We have power supply switching. Um, let's check output switching. We don't have any output switching, which means that the 40 hertz going into the RCAs isn't coming out of the speaker terminals, which is over here. Nothing out of the speaker terminals, so we have no sound but powers up fine. Why do we have no sound? One of the most common reasons to have no sound or no output switching in this case of class D, the output section isn't actually operational, it's not doing anything, so therefore that's why we've got no sound. One of the most common reasons for the output section not doing anything is because it's not being fed with the correct voltages to work with. So let's just make sure we have rail voltage. So we have negative rail down there and we have, I think, positive rail up here. So we have our rail voltages. Um, so that means we might not have our smaller supply voltages that the drive circuit will work with, plus minus 15 volts and stuff like that. So the easiest way to check that is have a look on the preamplifier board. The preamp board has op amps like this little TL072C here, and this will need plus and minus 12 volts in order to work. So that will tell us whether we have auxiliary voltages elsewhere on the board. So let's first of all probe pin number four. We have negative 12 volts, so that's good. Now let's probe pin number eight. We should have positive 12 volts. Aha, there's no positive 12 volts on this op amp. That means that the preamplifier circuit isn't gonna work. That also probably means that any voltages that will be derived from the plus minus 12 volts or plus minus 15 volts isn't gonna be making its way to the output section drive circuit, which is why we have no output switching. So take a quick look on the board then. Where is that voltage generated? We have the power supply over here, which is generating the main rail voltage. And usually there'll be another little couple of uh, secondary taps or on the transformer which will then be sent to some voltage regulators or some transistors and a xenodiode in order to create the auxiliary voltages so we have power supply fets over here some power supply fets over here and we have our rectifier diodes here and mm, probably a couple of voltage regulators or something along there especially because they're labeled u u means it's an ic integrated circuit or chip which is in the to220 package it looks like a transistor but it's actually an ic so that most likely is a voltage regulator so let's have a look then we have this one here which has nothing on leg one on leg two we have negative 28 volts which is going to be the input and on leg three we have negative 12 volts it's a 12 volt regulator so this one over here should be the positive leg one we have nothing leg two we have nothing leg three we have nothing so the voltage regular isn't actually being fed with a supply so let's take a look at where the supply comes from we have the transformer here and we have some rectifier diodes which feed this rec these uh, voltage regulators here so let's make sure that we have input to this yes there is our ac input for the negative 12 volts and this is our AC input for the positive 12 volts, so it's getting input to the rectifier diodes there. After the rectifier diodes, we should have a sort of noisy, or not so necessarily noisy, but a, a rectified uh, version of that AC input, which we do, there's our AC input, and the other side of that is 30 volts DC. So that 30 volts DC, if we follow the trace, is supposed to go through this little inductor here, so we have 30 volts DC on there, and we should also have 30 volts DC on the other side of the inductor, uh -huh, which we don't so therefore the issue is this little green inductor which is just designed to kind of smooth out or clean up the DC a little bit bef before going to the um, this capacitor smoothing capacitor and to the voltage regulator so in this case the only issue with this amplifier is this tiny little green inductor so we'll change that which will cause the amplifier section to come back up and running again and the preamplifier section to come back up and running again and this amplifier should work absolutely fine after changing just one tiny little piece